Hello, it's your Gemini friend with the 12th house. All the planets in the 12th house. I'm going to have timestamps for each individual planet if you just want to see one or two. But I'm stalling a bit because explaining the 12th house is like it's it's trying to explain something that is very difficult to put into words. If I could sum it up, any planets that you have here in the 12th house are not going to be for personal use so much as they are most ideally used in service for other people. For example, if you have like Mars, it would be action for other people, fighting for others. Mercury would be speaking for others. It's a service-oriented house, but the very purpose of this is It's essentially what is hidden, what is unclear, what goes back to, it's very hard to explain how I see the 12th house without going into my belief system, but whether you believe in reincarnation or not, there are different ways to interpret it. If you do believe in past lives, this house can have karma from past lives, past life energy that we have brought into this one. If you do not believe in the idea of having past lives, there is the umbilical effect where we absorb the, not just nutrients, but like the general emotional state of our mother when we're in the womb. So things that affect us deeply on a core level, but we don't necessarily know why. Like, unexplained but clearly there feelings and effects that thing ha things have on us, these can be seen in the 12th house. It's Pisces, Neptune, and overall this idea idea that we're trying to balance and understand in the 12th house is wanting to be an individual, our ego, our existence as individual humans on earth, and wanting to be a part of the whole, the oneness, the collective humanity, the unity that we came from. It's like the tug within us between wanting to go back to that pure unity and the desire to be an individual human. So some people are much more independent and oriented towards not wanting to be a part of the nebulous collective soup that we all came from. Other people are more oriented towards giving and potentially losing boundaries between the self and others. It's all about that. Traditionally, it uh, deals with institutions like hospitals, prisons, uh, any sort of institution where you are going there for a purpose and you're staying indefinitely. Um, and this is connected to service in these institutions as well finding yourself drawn to the various acts of service, things that you can do for people to be something bigger than just who you are. This is also like deep sensitivity and its potential downsides because the Neptune urge for dissolution of the individual can manifest itself in less than positive ways, think like self-sabotaging behavior or overindulgence, escapism. This is also our hidden enemies, which often are within us, 
So depending on what you have going on in here, there can be a deep need for introspection. This is the house of rediscovering who we really are, who we really are deep down and our connection to everyone else. And there's a real need to sacrifice, sacrifice, <laughs> martyrdom. Those are words highly relevant to this house. But the sacrifice can be positive or negative, you know? Um, but one thing that we do all ultimately need to sacrifice by the end of our lives is our attachments to everything, to everything material. This is about our attachments to existence itself, how deep your attachments are, what you're willing to let go of. So basically, issues in this house can indicate issues with the ego and being overly self-identified or the opposite end of the spectrum where you are just melting into other people, losing yourself in service, or foregoing your identity entirely for the sake of whatever your cause is. It's it's a lot. This is, does this make sense? I'm trying. I hope it does. I'm going to start with the sun because I could seriously go on. And honestly, I did go on. My first take, I, I think I spent like 20 minutes just trying to get somewhere with this. And I don't know that I've done that much better, but it's personal. It's deeply personal to each individual what this is going to mean for you. But at the same time, it's also the least personal because it is where we're going back into where we came from. Think Aries is the first sign, Pisces is the last sign. The first house is about our birth, our initial way of seeing the world, our impressions, and you go all around all the houses and you reach the end what do you do? You go back into the collective. You return to where we came from. It's all about the attachments to existence itself. It's a lot, but okay, sun. Now with the sun in the 12th house, this one, it depends a lot on the individual because you can really go one way or the other. You can identify heavily with the more Pisces, Neptune, service, self-sacrificial, deeply sensitive, creative, artistic side of it, where you are indulging deeply in mysticism, spirituality, anything that makes you feel like you're more than just one separate individual, or, you could have a real difficulty with these things because the sun is the ego, it's the, the identity, it's the self, it's who you are in this life, directly opposed to being a part of something bigger, something, <laughs> something so much less individuated and specific. The sun wants to shine and be who you are. So when the sun is here, there can be so much confusion when it comes to your identity. <laughs> I see this as potentially shifting identities, uh, very much of a sponge, very likely like emotionally where you're picking up on other people's emotions. But with the sun here, it's more likely that it's more of a trait that you're picking up on. Like the idea of, oh, I see that this person is this way. I like that. I should be that way too. And it's like kind of just a natural confusion potentially in who you are, what you want to be seen as. Because the confusion here, this, this house is like confusion. 
But either way, when the sun is here, it, it does indicate like deeply creative, artistic. You, your sensitivity can depend on various other parts of your chart, but you do have a connection to a deep sense of sensitivity and compassion, empathy. You likely find it in very find it very important to feel useful, helpful, like you are being of service in some way. You might you might be a very self-sacrificial person. But you also might just entirely reject anything spiritual it, it depends on your relationship with yourself and the deeper more hidden things inside you whether or not you have explored this most likely especially if you're watching an astrology video you are the introspective type where you're really identifying with these pisces neptunian traits of just like ethereal, imaginative, incredibly creative, the kind of sensitivity that picks up on like the undercurrents of things around you and knows how to express things that other people might have difficulty expressing. I also think like just having a way of being and coming across that makes people feel, again, this can go one of two ways. You could be confusing to people. They might not even know what to think. Like everyone has a different impression of you. Or you could come across as incredibly empathetic, somebody that somebody that people might overshare to, like they expect you to help them with their problems because you're really just exuding this healing energy. This is a great placement for a healer. If you're interested in any sort of, really any any sort of mystical type things, you should really lean into it, really lean into introspection. This is indicating that this is a massively important thing for you, spirituality, um, or creativity, however it is that you express the deep, deep, deep feelings that I'm sure you have, whether you are actively allowing them to come out or not. But th this is, it's a psychologically complex <laughs> placement to have. You might feel this push and pull energy in different directions Possibly your entire life where you're not sure if you want to really be a clear individual like this is who I am and then the next day you're like oh but I want to be something else or you have no idea today like just a, a shifting sense of who you are what you want to show up as but definitely hidden strength okay your strength might be hidden even from yourself it might be hidden from other people but when it needs to come out, it will. It's just that I, I feel like the biggest issue with this placement might be insecurity of, of any sort. It, it, it depends on you, but it can just be like insecurity of the self itself, like existence itself, like who you are wanting to show up as. Because the ego wants to be, there's nothing wrong with everyone has an ego and we can't just kill the ego. It's always here. It, 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 it can be helpful if we know how to manage it. But with this placement, you really want to make sure that the ego is serving the soul. The soul is the important part. The ego is what tells us in the external world who we think we're supposed to be, who we want to show up as. It's just not coming from a place of true authenticity necessarily. The ego comes from a place of self-protection. 
the ego is typically averse to change because it likes to be safe. It wants to keep us safe. It, it, it exists to help. It, it exists to help us on earth feel secure, comfortable, but obviously you can't always feel secure and comfortable or you won't grow. So this is the big challenge with this placement. Like, the need to be something versus your more subconscious needs that you might stuff them down, they might just come up, and they, they can come up. It's possible that if you are ignoring your intuition in the daytime, your dreams might give you messages. They might even seem like intrusive and surprising. Really look into your dreams. Any significant 12th house placements, your dreams are likely like a powerful channel to your higher self, potentially, most likely. But with this placement, it, there, there's a really strong need to explore the things that you might not want to. This is... indicative of needing to use your intuition as your guide. Like, the outside world might not even make sense at times, but you have a very clear inner compass. So getting in touch with that inner compass is going to be incredibly helpful if you're having any sort of issues with like assertion or just any, any personal self issues. But overall, this is a beautiful placement. I think this is gorgeous. Like the way that you can tap into this energy and then express it through your very being is beautiful. It's a wonderful placement for appearing to others like as a healer. <laughs> Not saying just the appearance, like you you being a healer and having other people see it is what I mean. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the moon. Okay, moon in the twelfth house this is a deeply, deeply, deeply sensitive placement. No matter what sign your moon is under, no matter what your relationship is with your sensitivity, um, you have a very deep intuitive power. This is a powerful placement. This indicates to me that you... You have a psychic ability to feel other people's feelings and know what's up with them without them having to tell you. And this can be a real issue if you don't have good boundaries. This is, this is a very vulnerable energy when it comes to like external feelings, just extreme empathy. It's quite possible that you might have issues with this because the main thing with Moon in the 12th house is like, is this my feeling or is it their feeling? Is it just an energy in the room? This is an ability to pick up on things that is, it's, it's incredibly strong. But it can be very hard because you need to, like, cleanse your energy. That, that's so important with this placement is to find a way to really, like, get all of the outside energy out and make sure what is really yours. Because there is such a potential to get lost in the feelings of other people. It's, it's a deeply compassionate and empathetic placement you could be drawn to any sort of like caregiving type activities um charity art 
art therapy. Ooh, art therapy would be a great one for this, like helping people solve deeper issues through creative expression. It's highly creative, very artistic placement because this is like tapped into collective inspiration, like like sensing undercurrents within humanity and all of us before they happen or just knowing the way to express something deep that will like get it through to people and it might not be through words it could be through like writing or poetry it could also be through visual art finding a way to just capture like emotions visually or through any form of creative expression. This is a wonderful, wonderful placement for creating art that other people are like immediately just emotionally hit. Like they can see what you were going for. Like, like your feelings that you put into your art is so strong. So you would do really, really well in, I mean, any field that has to do with expressing feelings, helping other people to express or comprehend their own feelings. Because the moon, the moon, the moon is comfortable in water houses. So this is not an uncomfortable house for the moon. But at the same time, it's the 12th house, so like anything here can go to an extreme degree. So escapism, any form of like, anything that can help comfort the emotions, potentially, you know, like substance abuse, that can be a risk with this because it's your feelings. It's your inner world, and it's not necessarily clear what it is that's bothering you. And just, like I said, this, this risk here of other people's problems becoming yours and you're not even realizing it, it's a really important thing to, when you have Moon in the 12th house, if you are feeling upset, <laughs> you need to take a minute to really go in and ask yourself, what is bothering me? Is it mine? Is this my responsibility? Because the, the responsibility that this placement will take on for other people's problems, feelings, emotions, it, it's that self-sacrificial element to it where it's, it's like an innate, almost completely natural way of handling seeing someone upset it's like you just might automatically take it on or feel guilty about somebody else being upset guilt can be a big problem with this placement uh and it also <laughs> it, it kind of points to possibly spending time in institutions when you were younger, like spending time in the hospital or uh, also. This one can indicate very confusing or strange, unusual relationships with the more maternal parent because, I mean, this is called like the house of the orphan. Moon in the 12th house can indicate some form of separation from the mother or from the family because it shows this way of nurturing yourself and processing your own emotions is it's 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 like so much more complicated than it necessarily has to be when it's here it might be hard to access the feelings completely you might feel numb to your own feelings. 
you might consider other people's feelings to be more important than your own, definitely make sure that you are treating yourself with as much love, compassion, and care as you possibly can. This is a really big placement for self-care and needing it more often than you might think. Because the root of your problem, it, it might not be easily accessible, it might take a lot to figure out how you even got here. The need for introspection, you just need to keep asking yourself deeper and deeper questions. If you have a problem, it's likely not the surface problem. It's likely connected to something much, much possibly back to childhood. Um, this is, since it's things that we hide from ourselves, you might even hide your own feelings from yourself, like a complete rejection of the emotion. So be really careful about that. Because when you are this emotionally vulnerable, Obviously, there's a high chance of, like, building up extreme armor, like impenetrable armor. So you might come across as cold, even, due to not embracing the... <laughs> embracing. Embracing is a hard word when, like, I, I don't know what this feels like. I don't know what it feels like to feel things this deeply so i'm not telling you it's gonna be an easy thing to embrace it but i am telling you that you have a connection to inner wisdom wisdom of not just this life and what you've learned and not just the wisdom of what you have accessed through other people like in a sponge type way, just a comprehension of things deeper than like this is this is a skill of yours. But if you do believe in past lives, this is all of your past life, emotional, just build up of all of that energy. And then it's also a connection to the collective oneness what we all know, what we've all learned. It's an extremely, this is a deep placement, okay? So if you can find a way to access that part of, you have a connection to it. It's, it's gonna be so up to you how, how this is even gonna, like, I just hope I'm making sense because <laughs> this, it's, Shared wisdom. It's wisdom of humanity. You have an intuitive connection to that. So listen to your intuition. That's going to be so important. And one other thing with this placement is that you probably need seclusion. Maybe more often than you think is appropriate. You might need to hide yourself away in order to be comfortable, in order to regulate your emotions, get all, you need to cleanse, you need to, you need to get everyone else's stuff out of you. Because taking on other people's problems is not going to help anything. You can help them with it, but make sure that first you're good. That's, it's so important with this. And just absolutely take time for yourself if you need it. If you never need to separate from a situation, don't put other people's opinions ahead of your own comfort and feelings of, like, safety. Because this is a need to feel emotionally safe while at the same time understanding just how much is out there that it's like, it's almost like people are a threat just because they have feelings. If you are feeling this, this deeply. So boundaries and uh, creating like energetic barriers for yourself are going to be really important tools for you. 
And once you have like mastery over your <laughs> barrier abilities, I would think that this placement can become, <laughs> it's like going from debilitating empathy to psychic superpower, okay? So work on cleansing other people's energies out of you and barriers to keep them out in the first place. You don't need to always keep people's feelings out because, like I said, this empathy is a superpower, but starting with really strict boundaries and then allowing select things to permeate your barrier, that's just what I would recommend if you have Moon in the 12th house. It, and I love you. This is a lot. Like, it's... I'm, I'm sending you love. And understanding... Because I see... I see how... I, I, I see you. I'm going to go on to Mercury. So Mercury in the 12th house, the very first thing that I think of is something that's kind of hard to explain. And it's, it's funny that it's hard to explain because that's what it is. Mercury in the 12th house is like beating yourself up for not being able to express things that you have such a deep understanding of, there aren't even words for it. This is mental intuition. That might not be a phrase, but it's the ability to receive insights through your surrounding environment, through, like, just being really insightful and intuitive with what you notice and what you are able to communicate. There there can be insecurity here when it comes to communicating. You might even hide your own intellect from yourself for various reasons. But this is a wonderful placement for helping other people in ways that deal with communication, like, like speech therapy or any sort of learning disabilities, helping people with that, I would think Mercury in the 12th house would be very drawn to and wonderful at helping people in that way. Because your ability to communicate goes beyond words. You would likely really excel in, like, abstract fields, Things that involve really abstract thinking, like outside the box, just, it's not a rational, logical placement, it's a more intuitive placement. You also, you also might have weird or uh, unusual, undescribable relationships with your siblings. Just gonna throw that out there. So, with... The idea of melting into other people and losing boundaries, not knowing where you end and another person begins, this can happen mentally for you in the way that you might... I'm just going to throw out telepathy. <laughs> like, intuiting other people's thoughts to the point where you're not even sure if it was your thought or theirs. Um, you might receive information through, like, higher beings. This is wonderful for channeling. As long as you're open to that and expecting it, because this can also be... Think like intrusive thoughts, paranoia, uh, just sudden and disturbing thoughts. <laughs> um... Or potentially just like a mental overload, a, a difficulty with handling anxiety, because what you've got going here is a lot, a lot. This is a lot of mental useful stuff and also just 
junk that you need to probably sift through and get it all straight. Because this indicates, like, kind of a hectic way of organizing, categorizing, like, a brain that, say, someone with Mercury in the 6th house might put things, and the 6th house is opposite the 12th house, so Mercury is kind of, it's not its most natural here, but the way that it expresses itself is wonderfully interesting. So someone with Mercury in the 6th house would, like, categorize their thoughts in a pretty structured, organized way. Like, they're putting them where they belong on shelves. Your thought process might be more nebulous and chaotic. Like, the thoughts go in and they just... You know, like, where are you connecting that? But the thing is, is that you might be hard to follow for other people because the connections that you make mentally and intellectually are possibly too intuitive for most people. Like, you might know exactly how you should explain something to someone and be wonderful at switching it up and being like a communication chameleon where you just pick up on people's ways of speaking and know how they're going to best understand things. But on the other side, you might understand things in a way that makes sense when it's in your brain, but once it's out your mouth, everyone around you is like, what? So there can be a lot of confusion here, potentially. And with the hidden aspect of the 12th house, you might be more secretive with information than you realize. Like, people might see you as somebody who they just... They, <laughs> You're very mysterious because they don't know what to think of what they've learned about you. It, they might see you as, like, vague or indirect or, like, somebody who just has a lot going on but isn't sharing. You might also need to take... Oh, meditation is going to be really important with this. Just finding time... I would, I would recommend just five minutes every day of really tuning in to your own mind. Just focus on something like just a, and really letting your thoughts organize themselves using, <laughs> this is not a good way of explaining it. Uh, forget it. I said meditation. Do meditation. <laughs> Um, just secluding yourself to organize your thoughts, to make sure that any recurring thoughts are dealt with. Because typically when we have a recurring thought, there's some sort of feeling or something deeper attached to it. And when you have Mercury in the 12th house, it's pretty much always deeper than it might seem. So... If you can figure out the source of whatever anxiety, mental, related issues that you're having, that's going to be incredibly helpful because this can indicate, like, thinking patterns that just continue and evolve usually not for the best because they might be stemming from something that like happened really early on processes of or your way of processing things in childhood that might continue to like disturb your way of being it, it's I think like ideas picked up in childhood that you didn't fully understand it at the time, but you understood it more on an energetic and intuitive level. So you took that and you started to think in that way, but in reality, it wasn't the best for you emotionally because you didn't fully understand it. What I'm saying is really go in and check really 
early memories that you have, if you have any recurring memories of being younger, no matter how insignificant they might seem, if it continues to pop up in your mind, it's important. That's going to be really important with this placement to explore those memories. If you can, get into a meditative state and put yourself in that scene. You can either be yourself and perceive the situation the way that you were at the time, but from your more adult perspective now, or you can like go back to your child self and talk to them as the adult older person that you are now. This is going to be helpful for identifying any thought patterns that you started really young that are not helping you because negative thinking is a real negative thinking can be a real problem a real problem like take care to think positively take care to if you're having a negative thought find a way to transmute it into at least a neutral thought. If you can adapt or adopt a mentality of neutrality more often, that might help with just any like emotional upset that you're technically causing within your own mind. But this is an incredibly imaginative, like your inner world is probably maybe more interesting than your outer world. This is great for writing, great for writing and telling stories and expressing much deeper things to people in ways that they are going to be able to comprehend maybe Expressing things in ways that are, like, new, people <laughs> didn't expect to hear it that way, and you're, you're a visionary imagination, you're, you're likely a visionary and should share these ideas, because where you're getting them from is a deeply powerful place. Your mind, just make sure that it's not, like, an enemy. Let, let your mind be a place of solace. You just might have to clean some things out first because there can even be confusion when it comes to memories or like the way that you learn certain things when it comes to communication. Venus in the 12th house is the most giving Oh, man. It, this is a love so deep that you likely see the beauty in everything. It's so important with this placement to focus on beauty. Focus on the beautiful things. Focus on anything that brings you joy and that you find beautiful because these things you have you have a special power in appreciating things that other people don't appreciate necessarily or don't even think to and this is also like learning the beauty of pain and tenderness deep vulnerability and showing other people that beauty it's <laughs> just thinking about it I'm not even joking like I could cry it it's artistically you are likely just like I, I can't imagine not having some sort of creative expression with this placement being inspired from such a deep imaginative place being inspired by your own pain the pain of others the collective pain of society and humanity the beauty in the dark side of existing as a human. This is 
it's really important to find a way to, to give yourself the same love that you are able to give so many other people, places, things. This is a real potential for overgiving, for sacrifice. It's so sacrificial. This is finding, finding sacrificial love to be beautiful, to be the way that you can most easily express love, a desire to express love through sacrifice, and even like a love of, okay, I'm just gonna say, appreciating, let's go with villains. <laughs> Deep love for villains, for compassion, compassion towards those who might not have acted in the best ways. Um, it's seeking a spiritual connection, some sort of mystical, like, ethereal connection to those that you love. It's really wanting to feel like in a relationship, this is a deep and significant thing. It's being drawn to people who maybe pull things out of you that you're, you might not even be ready to address them, but at the same time, it's like using love or relationships with people to try to transmute the darker things within yourself. So this is one that it, it can really, you need to be careful with this placement because it's it's gorgeous. It's deeply, deeply beautiful and loving, but at the same time, there are a lot of issues that can come up because of that need to give, to give yourself to other people. So there... There can be a feeling here where devoting yourself to just one person, I'm not saying that you can't do it, but I'm not saying that you can't do it because there is nothing that indicates that you can't. That depends on so much other stuff, but the feeling it's, how do I describe this? Um, knowing that Say you're in a relationship and you can give so much to your partner. You can improve their life. You can improve everything about their life. You're adding so much beauty to their life. And you recognize that you have the power to do that, not just for this person. You have the energy and the love to do this for... Who knows? You know, I, this is not... I am not saying that this is uh, like an infidelity type placement. What I'm recognizing is that there might be a feeling that you can do more than just a single relationship, you know? So there, it, it might be hard to tie yourself down to someone because you really want to... Like, saying play the field is not a good term for this because it's so much more than that. It, it's not just, like, experimenting. It's, it's you give. You give so much. So you need to make sure that you're giving to yourself, okay? The love that you have for other people, you are absolutely capable of loving your own self that same way. It, it, it might be, I mean, this can indicate like confusing feelings, especially in love or in relationships with people that you care about. You might find it confusing the way that you feel or the way that you're processing the relationship itself. There might be some confusion like from the outside seeing you in a confusing way or it might be unclear to other people what it is that you're offering. They might take a lot more than you need taken from you because there are people who take, you know, like you have to be really careful not to fall into any sort of situation where you are not receiving you there needs to be equal give and take like i know that you probably feel like 
you're always going to be the one giving more. And I don't want to say it's a possibility that you, since you have the capability of giving so much, you are likely going to always be a massive giver. But you need to be in relationships where you are receiving a sufficient amount. A, <laughs> I don't mean that to say, like, don't don't just set the bar low. Find the bar. Like, identify what it is that you really, really, really want out of other people. And make sure you're getting that. Because you give so much. Whatever it is that you take, it's not going to be too much. Like, I promise. It's <laughs> If you think that asking for what you want is going to be too much, then that's maybe not the right situation for you. Or you should find a way to assert that, at least address it. Because, I mean, the thing is, is like, Neptune confusion, you might also have unrealistic expectations from people, but that's not the same thing. I'm not saying that if you know what you need in a relationship, that you are being unrealistic, like, that's, that's, not it. What I mean by having unrealistic expectations is that you might just mix some things up. This is also absolutely wonderful. Like, art, like, <laughs> art is so significant with this placement because it's creating beauty out of such incredible depth. But your art has the potential to be so moving. And this is also like beauty behind the scenes. And I mean that in all of the ways that it can be interpreted. This could literally be like a makeup artist behind the scenes. Um, but at the same time, it can be... What's another example? Um, doing service that is not necessarily appreciated or seen, you know? It's a willingness to do those things without having them be acknowledged necessarily. And Venus in the 12th with the hidden aspect again, it can also indicate having more of a private way of going about relationships. Uh, you might keep your relationships a secret, like up until a certain point. It can even indicate like secret hidden love affairs. But for the most part, this is a wonderful placement for being, like, highly inspired and highly inspiring other people. Just make sure that you are good and you're not overgiving. Make sure you're getting what you need. This, this is really important with this placement. Okay, Mars in the 12th house is very interesting because this is our aggression, our drive, our physical desire to do things, the way that we go about like asserting ourselves. So in the 12th house, so you can really channel your assertiveness into helping other people. Like you might not be an assertive person. This can, this can kind of hide that side of yourself from you and from other people, but it's really great to channel the energy into something that does give to other people or that is something more intuitive and creative. This is great drive for um, any artistic endeavors that involve a lot of inspiration or imagination. Uh, but at the same time, with like hiding the aggression from yourself, there is a risk of, think a situation like you're angry about something. You might not even realize that you're angry about it, but what you're going to do instead of directly saying, because Neptune is so indirect sometimes, and, and it can just confuse things. Instead of just saying, I'm angry about this, let's fix it. What you will do is repeatedly find ways to bring up the problem until somebody else freaks out about it, until somebody else gets angry about it or like tries to solve it. I'm not saying that you don't solve your problems, but like this, this is just such a weird place to put Mars um, because it, it's not bad. It's wonderful for service and for doing massively powerful things that better humanity on a larger scale. This is a great, great placement for doing big things. 
Um, but, and it also indicates like inner strength, hidden strength, strength that might come out only when it really needs to, or at an unexpected time, or um, at the right time. But, but there is a need to be careful of like misplaced aggression because of the confusion. It's, it's like you might have conflicts within your own psyche. You might have a lot of turbulence going on in your mind and you're not expressing it outwardly or you might have issues with like your energy being drained possibly by people or emotionally taxing situations or just confusing energy drains uh lacking in energy at certain times it, it's important to like pay attention to any patterns with that or any people that you might find yourself being more tired around because it's your intuition it's like psychic undercurrents and it's your energy so like your physical energy so draining people are pretty much a signal to try to get away from that or limit your time in those areas this is important to have a job that is like channeling your energy into something helpful something that makes you feel like you're doing something of service or something bigger it doesn't have to be like working in a specific service industry it can be creating art that helps people it can be it can be yoga instructor this is yoga oh this is a great one for yoga if you have any like just <laughs> i don't know energy issues yoga would help so much i would recommend that because it's 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 using spirituality uh these i don't know a lot about yoga so i'm not going to like explain it but um you know yoga is deeper than just stretches and this is <laughs> this would be a really helpful thing that i would think you could channel your energy into something more internal and like helping yourself so being of service to yourself and your own emotions but the, the inner turmoil it likely comes from suppressed aggression suppressed anger and anger can absolutely be just anger you know be anger <laughs> anger can absolutely be like necessary needed just but there could be a tendency to like hide your own fears or doubts from yourself and in this way self-sabotage this can indicate self-sabotaging behaviors and you might have really strong drive and desire to explore like your spiritual side mysticism and spirituality you could have a real hunger for that um a really strong interest that uh, you can and also, like, advocating for underprivileged people, people who need an advocate, people who are not able to stand up for themselves, this is a wonderful placement for that. It's, it's great, like, for expressing yourself creatively. Tons of creative energy, tons of energy in reserve. And, like, when you do express yourself, whatever way that you are expressing yourself, it comes through in a way that there's really no way to describe it because it's going to be different for you. But like the way that it comes out is just so deeply attuned to depth itself. I, my words are getting flowery with this because it's hard to describe. Uh, it, there could be people might see you the way that you act as like 
inconsistent or confusing, that's a possibility. But like the ultimate goal with this placement is to transcend the self and really connect to a higher cause. That's whatever way that that comes through for you, this is going to be the best way to channel this energy is into something that like transcends the limitations of humanity, of society, of the body, of finding ways to use that strength to to work for a higher cause. It's it's not easy. This is not really an easy placement to have, but it is a powerful one and indicates that you you want to be doing something in your life that is going to be so much bigger than just you. All right, Jupiter in the 12th house. This this is like you're likely a very spiritual person. You're probably super interested in metaphysical spirituality, all sorts of just higher meaning things because this is the planet of collecting wisdom through expansion and it's in the house of the the deep inner knowing the deep connection to who we are so this just it's like guru energy uh somebody who can really tap into their spirituality and express it to other people it's just that one thing that can happen with this placement is that you might look so much outside of yourself. You might look externally for answers and you just keep finding more and more and more, but you might never feel satisfied. So the answer to that is that you actually have everything inside you. You can retreat within yourself and access the knowledge that you have. This indicates a strong connection to the collective knowledge that we all have inside of us, but it's a strong connection and a strong interest in finding it. But it also indicates that you might be searching externally for what you actually already have in here, you know? But it's a great placement for like a counselor, a therapist, somebody who helps people through oh, the hardest stuff. Like, this is an optimistic approach towards things that can be so so deep and hard potentially things that we want to keep hidden this is kind of like shining a light on them but in a way that helps helps you feel or helps other people feel helps whoever you're helping feel like like they can like they can address this thing it helps them feel like they are not going to be judged for it incredibly tolerant non-judgmental placement at its best but jupiter and and the 12th house what these both have in common is idealism, uh, unrealistic, uh, unrealistic ideas about things, because Jupiter has its excessive optimism, and the 12th house is confusing and can distort things, so in combination, I don't know how it's going to manifest for you, but there is a potential to distort things, though it's likely in a way that you perceive to be like a good thing <laughs> your intention is good is what I'm saying but if if this is aspected in more harsh ways it can definitely point to overindulgence and escapism uh substance abuse is a potential here because the excess of Jupiter and the escapism tendencies of the 12th house in combination, it's a big energy. So it's like, but it's like big inward. It's like expanding inward. So 
the depth of this inward expansion can sometimes be terrifying and seem like way too much. So we might try to rely on substances sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's just a possibility with this placement. Make sure moderation, moderation might be an issue. It, you might even, <laughs> you might even use philosophy or spirituality as escapism. See, this is where you want to make sure that you've got everything clear and you're not mixing things up because, oh my gosh, I just thought like, <laughs> like cult leaders, um, <laughs> very highly doubt that you are a cult leader, but to explain that, think the Jupiter energy of somebody who teaches other people through their wisdom, uh, a teacher, a wise teacher, and then the 12th house, like collective and confusion and spirituality and beliefs and just just a thought. This it, placement can manifest that way. Um, all I'm saying is like, as long as you're clear on what your beliefs are, where you're coming from, and what your intent is when you're expressing it to other people, most likely you're like a wonderful, good beacon of light in your society, in your, in your community. Because this is like, okay, say we have the hidden memories, trauma, childhood, past life, whatever junk that we have inside that needs to be addressed. Jupiter is wonderful at using optimism to transmute lower vibrational stuff into stuff that we can really use for our benefit. So I would think that Jupiter in the 12th, it's much more likely that you are doing something directly to benefit other people. This is also very service oriented, very growth oriented. It, you, you might have such a strong desire to teach and help you might want to travel around and help everybody. Traveling healer? Oh yeah, that absolutely. And this is also so, so generous. Charity, like volunteering, philanthropic, highly ener energy of just good, spreading good as wide as you can. This is a gorgeous, this is a wonderful placement. It, it's on <laughs> at its highest expression absolutely beautiful placement it it could point to like excessive daydreaming though anything in excess but with the 12th house daydreaming and fantasy which can be channeled into writing stories expressing yourself artistically um all sorts of different ways that you can but it can indicate like escaping into your own mind And also maybe spreading yourself too thin because wanting to help and just wanting to help so much that like, when do you stop? When do you take time for yourself? All, all significant placements in the 12th house need to focus on self-care, making sure that you are getting what you need and not overgiving. Overgiving is definitely a possibility with this placement. Um, and one other thing with this is that you might have a sense of luck that comes through unexpectedly, maybe like at the last minute, uh, but it's consistent. Something, it's like you just find that you're lucky, like you have a guardian angel watching over you, like um, blessings, opportunities that are not initially apparent, but they become uncovered. And then you realize like, wow, this was for my benefit all the time, for the whole time. So. Just know that if you have Jupiter in the 12th house and you are searching, starving for information, for understanding, the truth is in you. You know the truth. You know who you are at your core. It's, it's in you. You're, you can find all sorts of wonderful things on the outside, but the most wonderful thing is in here, okay? If you have Saturn in the 12th house, this is quite a sober placement. 
it kind of points to a feeling of like debt to society like you owe service <laughs> it's a common sense this is putting saturn in the 12th house it's like the planet of discipline and practicality in a place that is you know typically quite confusing and mixes things up so having saturn here it's interesting you could have deep deep like a diligent attitude towards your service whatever it is that you have chosen to be your active service it can be a creative expression whatever you do to better humanity to feel like more of a part of everything it might be hard to ask for help with this placement this is it's responsibility this is like a lot of responsibility and acceptance of like the duty the as a part of humanity a a component of society you recognize that we owe each other to try to improve things you might be really into a cause um that betters society but and you might you might be really disciplined in your inner work in your your introspection you might have like even a routine be really good about that but at the same time saturn can indicate fear uh, and restriction due to that fear so when you've got fear and restriction in the 12th house there can be a fear of inner work um a fear of the inner world the subconscious a fear of like subconscious issues coming out to bite you <laughs> um and i mean there can even be a rejection of like the core self itself so insecurity can definitely come with this placement um even intensified loneliness this planet definitely or this placement definitely indicates that you might prefer solitude or find yourself in solitude when you do not prefer it or feel like you need to be alone but you don't want it at the same time a kind of issue with that because there is this fear potentially of the very concept of merging with the oneness of of losing not so much losing the ego but the ego's fear of losing control over what you have control of in this life because where saturn is it it, it it can indicate that we are either overly controlling in this particular situation due to the fear of being controlled by it or we restrict ourselves due to some fear of it, it could be you you could have some really deep dark things memories traumas and working through them can be scary it it can be something incredibly unpleasant basically this placement can indicate that you need to do inner work make sure that your emotions and your thought process all of your subconscious processes are like healthy that that you're going about things in a healthy way and when you do do this work you do it better than anybody else but if you aren't getting there in the first place that's going to be where a lot of unaddressed issues will slip by and affect you in your daily life so there can be a pervasive sense of self doubt or of a fear of the unknown this can indicate fear of the unknown uh preferring to stay within more comfortable situations 
it doesn't necessarily indicate that it just can because at the same time you can also you have the diligence and drive to put yourself through these necessary situations uh the the necessary situations it's like you have all of this drive towards helping other people but when it comes to helping yourself on the inside that's where you restrict yourself but with this placement you really 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 do need to explore the root causes of your fears you need to do that deep inner work that introspection inner child work shadow work these sorts of things might be repulsive to you but if you are working on them you might love it because you notice how much of an effect it has on you because this placement like i said it's it's sober it's heavy this is a heavy placement this is a heavy planet in a house that <laughs> is so deep that <laughs> the heavy planet is it's gonna fall to the bottom if you don't support it in some way you might find yourself in states of deep depression this placement i would say can definitely indicate depression the way out of the depression is to face the things that you don't want to if you are depressed there is definitely something there that needs to be faced and if you think that you faced it but you still haven't processed it there's a lot more there you need to push through the fear and if you don't have an issue with that then i can guarantee that you have super strong perseverance through like really hard situations this is a powerful powerful placement to have when it comes to dealing with things that need to be dealt with uh especially like societal underbelly type stuff this is wonderful wonderful for working in hospitals and prisons in uh <laughs> the only institutions i can think of right now but um places that are not necessarily the most fun you might thrive in these places of uh like community service charity charity work uh i mean and anywhere where it takes a particular personality or constitution to handle it you would likely be wonderful at these difficult jobs that take a lot of emotional uh control because you i mean it's possible that you are suppressing your emotions because this is this is control of the subconscious like that's what this is is a deep sense of needing to control what is uncontrollable what is inside and it's like you can't just keep it inside you might feel like you would prefer to just keep it inside but it's going to come out so it's better to process it when you are on your own <laughs> and in a a state that like on your own and in safety and comfort it's it's just it, it's like you understand the seriousness the the weight that things in our subconscious can have you don't take these things lightly you don't take trauma lightly there might be a need with this placement to find ways to lighten up and introduce some more joy and fun into your life but that's not to say that you're not that sort of person this is just a saturn placement saturn is not a personal planet so the level at which this is affecting you saturn affects us all in the house where it is but this is not like a be all end all personality trait it's it's your saturn placement it's not who it's it's not indicative of your personality type or the sort of person that you are 
it's more talking about one of the long-term lessons you're going to have in your life. So just make sure that you are not keeping too tight a hold on the stuff that you don't want to get out. But otherwise, this is this is just so much, so much compassionate healing energy that is expressed in the most practical way. You, you can do hard jobs. <laughs> Uranus in the 12th house. So this can indicate that within your subconscious, you might feel like an outsider or like you do not fit into traditional norms. This can be having a very unconventional approach to introspection, to even your subconscious processes. See, when the planet of nonconformity and rebellion is in the house of our deeper, more subconscious impulses and processes that we have going on that affect how we're acting, but without us necessarily being conscious of it, this can influence you to behave in ways that might be contrary to what you think you should be, or just like something, something contrary is going on in there. There's something subconscious that drives you to behave in a way that you might not understand, others might not understand. And there can be a sense of not wanting to lose your freedom. That could actually be a deep hidden motivation, a motivation hidden from yourself to make sure that you're never under anyone's control or that you never are coming across as boring or uncon or conventional you might have a deep-seated need to feel like you are different or you might have a subconscious way of going about things that causes you to feel like you are different it can go either way but this indicates that something about your natural processes are not necessarily going the way that you intend for them to or the way that you believe that they should. But there is a deep need for these things to be freed. You might be averse to exploration and introspection inside of you because you don't want to... You, you might be averse to the very idea of working on, this is, it's, it's hard to explain this thought that I'm having. It's like a, a natural inclination towards behaving in a way that might feel like, there's chaos inside you because <laughs> it's like a battle. Uh, a battle of intuition and intellect, possibly. So, this is also unique, unconventional ways of going about, like, your own personal deep exploration, therapeutic practices that you have for yourself you might find your emotions or your reactions to things to be unpredictable like you don't know where it's coming from and that's because you've got chaos potentially in your subconscious something about your natural process is just like is automatically working in a way that it doesn't work against you because this is an energy that you do want to lean into, it is who you are, but it might seem to work against you in the way that it's like really hard to even figure out where, where, this, where this is coming from. This indicates a very deep need to go deep 
and figure out the root of whatever it is, like, it, it could be all sorts of problems can arise from this. It's not inherently a problematic placement to have, though, because... Because you might have your own style and technique of doing the inner work. And in this way, you can be inventive for helping other people. Like, there are therapy... Forms of therapy, specifically primal therapy, is one that I really feel like connects with this Uranus in the 12th house energy. It's the idea of going into your memories, your fears, certain things that bother you. I'm obviously not an expert on primal therapy, but you're going back to that situation that you do not want to go to, and you are experiencing it firsthand as if you were there. And that exposure, this is just an example of a form of therapy that is inventive. Because Uranus has newer ideas of how to go about things. We're just connecting this innovative energy with the 12th house. Uh, and what they have in common is this humanitarian, people-oriented nature. It, this really indicates being a humanitarian type of person, wanting to do something with your life that is bigger, than you and that does help people on a deep level but it's really going to depend on a lot of things within your chart whether this is actually a desire of yours or whether this is like something deeply disruptive in your life and this energy drives you crazy because because of these <laughs> subconscious processes that are not necessarily like, clear in origin, clear in why you're doing things. The resistance that can come can actually be a form of rebellion coming from inside yourself, possibly, possibly along the lines of, like, your ego trying to protect yourself, but at the same time, your ego not wanting to fit in or your ego wanting to be just going against the grain. It's just a very ingrained need to go against the grain that might be so subconscious that it is manifesting itself in various problems. So if you do have this placement, it is really important to look into the root of issues. And the root can go so much further back than we can even realize. You might be working on a problem, and then years later something reveals itself and it's so much deeper and you realize, oh, okay, this actually came from that. So this, this is what is really necessary because Uranus is also like spontaneous insights, uh, disruptions that actually lead us in a positive direction so long as you're leaning into the positive energy or having positive intentions for yourself. So... If you find yourself having these, like, almost intrusive, spontaneous insights, spontaneous ideas about your own inner workings or, or the inner workings of others, because this can definitely indicate an interest in psychology and helping other people more within their own mind and with helping people with, like, deep-seated traumas. And there's also, like, the way that Uranus can sense undercurrents of society, sense, like, directions that we are going in as, as humanity. And then Neptune also having a deep connection to where we're going as humanity, but in a different way. Since the 11th house is more oriented towards how we fit into communities and how we fit in the 11th house is Uranus energy. That's why I mentioned this. The, how we fit into communities and like what we are doing, what we're making of ourselves, while the 12th house 
where we fit into a community is more about like not being an individual but being a part like a an integral integrated an integrated flowing part of humanity so combining these energies is like feeling the undercurrents and trends of society, but on a deeper level, not just like trends, but like where we're going emotionally, what direction we're going in psychologically, collectively. This is quite a difficult one to put into words. And honestly, if you have this placement, you might understand it better than I'm able to explain. But I hope that this is enlightening in a way. Um, this can also indicate just a, a basic resistance to structure or having a routine. You might find it uncomfortable to be doing the same thing every day or to have a really clear set routine. Or you might find that you subconsciously disrupt your own sense of routines even if you do want to make one like things just always somehow don't work out the way that you were planning can be a possibility here it's also related to like more esoteric subjects like astrology like like mysticism metaphysical stuff and it really indicates a strong interest in that sort of things a more it's like taking the intellectual approach to it, but then putting it in a place of deep feeling. So you're really getting both sides of it. So long as you are able to combine these energies in a way that is productive for you, because they're, they're interesting. <laughs> like, just think about trying to mix electricity and mist. Like, but um, th this can also be using... Mm, it could be a lot of different things. It, it could be art or music or like psychedelics. You using tools to reach higher levels of inside, <laughs> inner. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Um, higher levels of insight through the use of tools, and this can also be like having that as your profession, like guiding people like a, like a shaman or something, um, guiding people through trips through their subconscious, because that is an unconventional approach. Neptune in the 12th house is its most natural. The, it, the house is ruled by Neptune. So having Neptune here is a, I was going to say comfortable, but that's not quite the right word. It's a comfortable place for Neptune to be. But this energy is naturally ungrounded. It's incredibly inward focused. And it is deep. It's, it's the, the depths. This is... Think of a ball of water entering a pool of water. It, it's, it's water. It's integration. It's dreams very dream oriented if you have neptune and it's significant it like it plays a significant role in your chart um neptune in the 12th house can absolutely indicate messages through dreams dreams being a very powerful tool for you like therapeutically you should if you have neptune in the 12th house please have a dream journal if you do remember your dreams all sorts of things could happen with sleep you might find Either way, disrupted sleep, really heavy sleep. Sleep is likely significant in some way. And it's also quite beautiful because Neptune is very interested in seeing the deeper beauty of things. And when I say beauty, I don't mean aesthetic beauty. I mean, like, the real beauty appreciating the beauty of something it can be aesthetic but it's more seeing the beauty in things that 
are either overlooked or possibly darker things, transmuting darkness into something that you can appreciate and feel really deeply. This is a great placement for guiding other people through their challenges, for, for helping with healing. It's a, an incredibly healing energy to have. People might pick up on that in you. And you might find yourself connecting to people who are suffering, drawn to those who need help, uh, drawn to charity, organizations, to, to institutions, to uh, places where you are going to be of service. You might really find yourself naturally falling into the service role. But it really indicates a spiritual sensitivity, a connection to more mystical spiritual realms, and really being receptive to energy itself. You can find yourself absorbing other people's emotions, identifying feelings inside you as not your own or not identifying them when they aren't yours and taking them on as your own. So this is another one where you really need to make sure that you are cleansing yourself of other people's energy. Like you can feel the heaviness of not even just other people's energy, but the energy of places. You could be very receptive to the energy of places or of anything like <laughs> just energy in general you could be watching something that might upset you on a deeper level than you realize so you do want to be careful to not be exposing yourself to too many things that you're going to find upset and disturb you this doesn't mean like absolutely avoid everything disturbing but make sure that you are not unconsciously taking on things that are not yours and keeping them you want to if you're exposed flush it out find a way to energetically cleanse yourself because you can easily take on other people's problems and other people's anxieties and traumas and upsets in general and since this is such a sensitive placement it can indicate a need to escape. So Neptune and the 12th house are both like high risk of escapism, any form of escapism. It could be daydreaming, it could be substance abuse, it, it could be, it comes down to the sensitivity, the, the receptivity, the overwhelm that comes with that. So you need to make sure that you do have healthy outlets for feelings. But it's likely that introspection is a very comfortable place for you. And you also might find yourself having insights to situations that you haven't actually experienced yourself, but you can just feel... Like, the, this is why it's such a wonderful placement for being a counselor, helping people, therapeutically helping them through their pain, because you really do likely feel for them on a deep level. Or you can, like, your sense of empathy is so strong that you can imagine vividly how it feels. So immersing yourself in fantasy might be really, really appealing. You, you might need to watch just how much you do that so that things don't become too ungrounded because for whatever reason we do have to exist in these bodies on earth <laughs> it might be hard for somebody with this placement to even accept this body that is like a prison for the mind you might want to go somewhere else entirely and you likely have the ability to really create these worlds this is a a big one for having an inner world much more rich than your actual life and there might be a need to like a 
feeling that you have a need to retreat often or in certain circumstances an overwhelming need to retreat need for solitude need to separate yourself from situations and when you do feel that it's likely an intuitive like an intuitive it's likely your intuition telling you that you should probably separate yourself from that thing because you can be this can indicate like a sensitivity to negative influences you might even be so appreciative of things in general like really seeing the beauty and appreciating things that you might expose yourself to more negativity than you actually need or a feeling like you can handle these darker things which you can but there might be like a compulsion towards it in an excessive amount like <laughs> say upsetting yourself on purpose just for the I don't I I'm not sure <laughs> why um I just think you might like to expose yourself to like sad music sad stories or you might hate it it depends on how the feeling is processed for you but it's like one way or the other a really strong feeling towards exposing yourself to these things because you either take it on so much you want to avoid it completely or you love it because it's such a deep experience for you like you can you can experience all sorts of things so vividly through your imagination so that can be it can be interesting it can be entertaining in a way that is like a really extreme form of entertainment but it's it's a very creative dreamy dream what daydreaming um daydreaming writing stories making art expressing your feelings through art and creativity having a creative outlet is so important for this um and and it's the type of creativity that comes from something deep within and an ability to express that depth within you i saying clearly might not be the right word when this is neptune that we're dealing with but making it poignant at least uh bringing these depths to be more accessible to people who do not typically immerse themselves in these depths because we need people who can understand comprehend and share the depths of humanity the sensitivity that whatever about this to be it's it's like <laughs> you have access to the full spectrum of emotions whether you want to face them or not but with the emotional sponge thing comes like a need for boundaries this planet and this house are both the need for boundaries energies it, it's it wants to go back to oneness um so so in that desire for going back to I don't know how to say it um in that desire to return to where we came from <laughs> you might just find it really hard to see where your thoughts and feelings and and another person's begin picking up on their stuff taking on other people's problems taking on energies that are not your own that aren't good for you it just it really amplifies your compassion and your empathy so this is a lovely placement so compassionate and understanding but at the same time there is a uh, real need to make sure that you are keeping your boundaries really solid making sure that you know who you are 
you know what you feel and you are able to separate yourself from outside influences that are not good for you. Pluto in the 12th house can be all right. It's not inherently rough, but what it does indicate is a really intense subconscious, really intense processes going on here. It, it can indicate deep trauma that might stem from something that you cannot even figure out. It, it might be, I mean, specific examples of that can be pre-birth trauma or picking up problems that your mother was dealing with when she was pregnant with you is a just a very specific example of what I'm trying to explain. This idea of something happened. It can be past lives if you subscribe to that idea. Say past life trauma that is still affecting you now. This indicates a very, very, very strong need to dig as deep as you possibly can. It can indicate heavy generational trauma, ancestral trauma that you have picked up on, and due to your strength in this lifetime, you can be able to break cycles. Because this is all about, like, when Pluto was in the 12th house, this is a connection to the collective darker side, okay? It's the idea of having the strength and power to transmute the collective pain, rage, control issues, collective dis difficulties, processing them through you and transmuting them into something that will no longer be hurting us. It's a very powerful placement to have, and it really can be turbulent. It can indicate internal conflict and even anxiety about death, uh, death-related thoughts, the very concept of dying and becoming, becoming once again, you know, just, oh, God, I just, I don't know how to say these things. It, it can even indicate like picking up on other people's repressed issues and drawing them out of these people while all of this is just a, a something that's going on that neither of you even realize is going on. You might find that people dump their baggage on you or that you subconsciously pick it up. You might even pick up on energies in the atmosphere, especially if they are unpleasant energies. You can be very, very, very sensitive to your surroundings because you have an ability to pick up on energies in the air that are maybe not perceived by other people. You, you can pick up on them. So it gives you a really deep connection to your intuition. You might have, you might have developed your intuition early on for any number of reasons, possibly due to some sort of betrayal or fear, mistrust related situation. You might have learned early on that, that just learning a lesson early on about uh, the darker side of people psychologically, this shows a very strong interest and ability to uh, comprehend really complex psychological like workings inside people probably in a way that you feel and understand more than you can even articulate and it, this this is like a big one for just feeling like something is off somewhere or with a person just feeling that something is off these are most likely 
intuitive insights, but they can indicate parts of you that are triggered by these situations. Because with Pluto, wherever it is, we have a, a need for constant work and transformation where we are always growing. And this is inside you. The work is happening inside you. So as long as you are doing the inner work, shadow work, introspection, as long as you're dealing with it, then you will only continue to grow and be stronger and stronger because this does indicate very, very strong emotional resilience, power, um, control over your subconscious processes, control over your feelings, um, potentially a need for control of others due to a fear or a reason to feel like you are... There, there just might be like an inherent feeling of not feeling safe. Hopefully only in specific situations and not always. But if you always don't feel safe, then definitely figure out the root cause of that. That is an incredibly important thing for you to, to feel safe, you know, and at least within your own mind. But you recognize that there is so much. There's so much. You, you can always go deeper. There's always more. You might also be more inclined towards like secretive behavior, being being secretive with your thoughts and feelings. Um, maybe hiding things from yourself even or being averse to sharing too much when it comes to how you're feeling or or like memories sharing harder things inside you, you might really not want to share them. <laughs> How do I say that more clearly? It, it can also indicate maybe misplaced fear. Like when I mention certain people, places, things potentially trigger, triggering you, it, it's, it's kind of difficult with this one because you can get triggered. Whenever you have a strong emotional response to something, there is a really deep need for introspection because you, it, it might be a, how do I explain this? Eh. But for the most part, you are likely great at uncovering hidden issues, whether they're within you or within like a system, within another person, helping people psychologically, wonderful for any sort of psychological help and counseling. And depending on your relationship with the concept of death at this moment, you do have the potential to be a somebody who is like a sense of solace for those who are say in like hospice type situations this can be death related service or really wanting to make a mark on humanity in the way of being deeply helpful uh psychologically <laughs> that's a terrible way of putting it Take out that last sentence about making a mark on humanity. I I I can explain it better. Um, <laughs> and the thing is, is that when you do the inner work, you are going to have more hidden strengths and talents come out as you work through things. Like, say you have a recurring problem. If you really work on getting to the root of it and solving it, you will be rewarded. And the thing is, is the re reward, <laughs> the reward is probably something like a much deeper understanding that you can use to help other people and also to reach new depths and layers within you. It's like the work is rewarded by 
even more work, but the satisfaction that you get from peeling back these layers and going deep into it is like, it's, it's incredibly satisfying to overcome these struggles because... The ability to integrate the the darker and the lighter sides of you, this is showing that you really can get down into the absolute depths, the deepest of depths, the darkest of depths, and find a way to transmute that into something beneficial and help yourself and others with that. It's essentially just an extremely strong and deep inclination towards inner work and an ability to achieve so much psychologically, <laughs> internally, and with other people. You are well equipped for analyzing your own thoughts and other people's. You're likely super interested in psychological processes And probably in people or, like, humans. <laughs> and the way that they work. And probably the darker sides of that. You might be really, really comfortable with your darker side. And you might find... You might find answers through your dreams. Um, through nightmares, even. This can indicate nightmares. But... Nightmares that are tied to specific psychological processes, uh, complexes inside you. If you have recurring dreams, especially if they are difficult ones, you, I would recommend writing it down. Like, after you have it, write it down. It, or if you're just remembering the dreams, write them down and analyze it. Write down more every time that you have it and find the patterns. Dream analysis is, this is great for that. This is like professional dream analysis. Um, you have a power there. If you remember your dreams, any patterns that you have in your dreams, take note of them and pay really close attention because that's your subconscious giving you clues. It's showing you the way that you are interpreting your day-to-day -day life, but from an internal place. You can identify what comes up in your dreams most frequently, how it makes you feel, what you think that's connected to, and any memories that you can connect it to. And, and I mean, this is also like potentially just very intense psychic experiences. It's a an incredibly psychic placement. So if you are so inclined, I would lean into any sort of insightful, intuitive, uh, really strengthen your third eye with this one because you, you have the ability to like look into people on a level that they would maybe never be able to see themselves. But you, you also might be sensitive to darker energies in the atmosphere, um, like susceptible, make sure that you have clear boundaries and like shielding going on because you'll, you'll pick up on it. Like this can be sudden, intense, just dark feelings that is picked up off of something else because it's affecting you in that way. And it just like comes on so strongly and so quickly, you might experience things like that. Always, all of these issues are an indicator that you should see what it is at surface level and then just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. This is a powerful placement. It's not the easiest, but it's, it's fascinating. And you're... So long as you are using it for personal growth, it, it's incredibly powerful. So that was the 12th house. 
the last house. So this is the end of my Planets in the Houses series. Thank you so much for watching them. I am going to go on to make many more series, so please give me recommendations. Tell me what you're interested in. I will do my best to explore any subject that you want me to look into. I'm just so interested in astrology and every single person. I want more and more information always. I want to know what's going on with everyone so that I can build upon my knowledge and use it, spread it. I'm going on a tangent. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. You're wonderful. Please have a wonderful day.